Okay. That's good. That's plenty. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bha Kiri Varadhari Gopi Janavala Bha Kiri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yamana Tiravana Chari Vana Chari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai, Mr. Pad, Paramahansa. Paduruja Charja, Ashto Tarutha Shri Srimad. His Divine Grace, Sri Laisi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Jai. His Khan BBT found that I told you. Sri Laisi Bhaktivedanta Swami Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. <coughs> All glories to Shiguru and Goranga. Okay. So I had to get the Bhagavad Gita with the bookmark in it. So we get the right verse. So let's see if we can do that now. Okay. There it is. Okay. According to this, 1856. All right, that's good. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya You have to try to chant with us, Prabhu. Sorry. You were a little behind. All right, next time. All right. On the 17th day of, day of July, 2023, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we're in chapter 18, text 56, on page 697. Okay. Sarva Karmani. Api Sada Kurvano Madhyapashriya Matpasadad Avapnoti Shasvatam Padam Avyayam Sarva Karman Yapi Sada Kurvano Madhyapashriya Mat Pasada of Apnoti Shasutam Padam of Vayam Oh, wait, 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 I'm, I'm going to give a few more. You have a different book there, Marma. It's 1856. Verse 1856. Okay. Sarva Karman Yapisada Kovano Mad Vipashriya. Mat Pasada of Apnoti Shasutam Padam of Vayam Sarva Karman Yapisada Kuavano Mad Vipashriya Mat Pasada of Apnoti Shasutam Padam of Vayam Marvapuripu Sarva Karman Yapisada Kurvano Mad Vyapashriya Mat Prasada of Apnoti Shashwatam Padamam Yadam Ishtadev Sarva Karman Yapisada Kurvano Mad Vipashriya Mat Prasada of Apnoti Shasvatam Padam of Vyam Sarva Karman Yapisada Kurvano Mad Vipashriya Mat Prasada of Apnoti Shashvatam Padam of Vyam. Go ahead, Paul. Sarva Karman Yapi Sada. Sarva Karman Yapi Sada. Kurva no Marva Yapasra Yaha. Kurva no Madhya Pasra Yaha. Mat Prasada of Apnoti. Mat Prasada of Apnoti. Sasvatam Padam of Yayam. Shashvatam Padam of Vyam. Sarva Karman Yapisada Kurvano Mad Vipasraya Kurvano Mad Vipasraya Mat Prasada of Apnoti Mat Prasada of Apnoti Shashvatam Padam Abhyayam Shashvatam Padam Abhyayam Okay, I'll read the word by words. Sarva all Karmani activities, Api although, Sada always, Kurvanaha, performing, Mat Vipasraya under my protection. Mat Prasadat, by my mercy, Avapnoti, one achieves Shasvatam, the eternal Padam, abode, Abhyam, imperishable. Translation, though engaged in all kinds of activities, my pure devotee, under my protection, reaches the eternal and imperishable abode by my grace. Time out. 
much. It's too, <laughs> it's too much. Wow, that's pretty serious. Okay. <laughs> Purport. The word mad, madhvyapashriyaha means under the protection of the Supreme Lord. To be free from material contamination, a pure devotee acts under the direction of the Supreme Lord or his representative, the spiritual master. There is no time limitation for a pure devotee. He is always 24 hours a day, 100% engaged in activities under the direction of the Supreme Lord. To a devotee who is thus engaged in Krishna consciousness, the Lord is very, very kind. In spite of all difficulties, he is eventually placed in the transcendental abode or Krishna Loka. He is guaranteed entrance there. There is no doubt about it. In that supreme abode, there is no change. Everything is eternal, imperishable, and full of knowledge. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnanandana Shalakya Chakshu Unmilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Sri Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So, remember, this, is, this chapter is entitled, The Perfection of Renunciation, or Sanyas. So, the Krishna is saying here that, we, that the ideal devotee, pure devotee, is always performing all kinds of activities. So it's not activities that we renounce, but really it's the uh, fruit of nature of, 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 of activities that we renounce. And that's why Krishna has it stressed uh, that one can, uh, remember there's this verse that in the, in, the, in the performance of one's own work, one can, by worship of the Lord, who is the source, this is text 46, by worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings and who is all-pervading, a man can attain perfection through performing his own work. So the this, this stress here is that uh, you don't have to, and you're not required to, take sannyas in the formal sense uh, of leaving home and cutting all your ties and things like that. But it's an internal state. That one who is, uh, this like, I, I, I listen to lectures every day, and Prabhupada is stressing in this one lecture that so many, the vast majority of Lord Chaitanya's intimate devotees were grahastas, especially in Navadvip, right? So I, I had Raita Acharya and Srivas Thakur, uh, they had families, but they were 100% sold out to the service of Lord Chaitanya. And indeed, there's this incredible pastime where. You know, there was a, if, it, if, if and when you visit Mayapur, our center there, you just go down the road a five-minute walk and you're in Srivas Angan, the Srivas' house, where they had <coughs> all these nocturnal kirtans. This is where Lord Chaitanya actually started the Sankirtan movement, inside, you know. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful place to visit. And, and he didn't let anyone, non-devotees in, you know. Because they, they, they wanted to be simply the, uh, you know, the, the mood of, of would, would be ruined if you had, you know, people coming in there just as uh, witnesses or whatever, you know. So during one of these kirtans, Lord Chaitanya is absorbed and he's dancing and, you know. And Shiva's talk was one of his sons died, a, you know, young boy. And he was in another room and all the ladies were in there, you know, and Shiva's talk came in and said, don't start wailing and everything. We don't want to spoil Lord Chaitanya's mood. You know, that's how detached he was. But Lord Chaitanya was, you know, the main personality of God. And so after a few minutes, he said, something, something bad has happened in this house. You know, something that's, that's kind of, that's the, the, the mood is not what it used to be. So Shiva Sakura said, yes, yeah, my son died. So why didn't you tell me, you know? So Lord Chaitanya, he went to see, and, and he uh, brought the boy back to life, just like we've been reading about Chitraketu, you know, that... Uh, that his son was brought back to life by Narada Muni. And now we're, that, was, that was a tremendous experience for Chitraketu, and he became detached, especially after the son was preaching to him. You know, the little son means a little baby. He says, whose son am I really? I've been through so many bodies, and so I had so many mothers and fathers, you know, and, and the soul is different from the body. So he became enlightened by that and renounced his family and eventually uh, we're reading how he was uh, instructed by Narada Muni to offer this prayer and now he's, gonna, he's got a darshan of Sankrishan and all these different things. 
So the point is, is that uh, it, the activities, whether you, you don't have to be a uh, rahasta, obviously, but whatever you do, you take shelter of me. Madhya Pashriya, what does that mean to, under my protection? Well, you, you be under Krishna's protection when you're performing activities that he wants you to perform. Arjun, you know, he's, he was put into illusion by Krishna so he could speak the Bhagavad Gita. But in his state of not fighting and, and, and confusion, he wasn't under the protection of Krishna. He, he's assuring Arjun that don't worry. You know, first of all, no one is going to die. That's the first lesson. You have to get off this bodily platform and think that, oh, I'm going to kill my grandfather and my teacher and I can't stand it, you know. He even says, which is the most amazing thing, knowing the Mahabharat, you know, the, the, the many conspiracies that they had to try to annihilate the, and, and murder the Pandavas. The, the most dramatic of which is the burning house, the house of lack. It's not, it's not lacquer, but it's lack. Yeah, that was one of my editing things. I, I thought, <laughs> lack is, a, is kind of a thing from insects. It's very flammable. I don't know if you know her pastime, but it's, oh, we have this nice house in this, I forget the name of the city, it's a short way away. Why don't you go and live there for a while? I said, okay. The Dura, who was friends of the Pandavas, he warned them with like a riddles, you know. I forget what he said, but it indicated it's very flammable and they're going to burn it. So they got there and they, uh, they engaged someone to, the Prabhupada said to, they dug a subway, we're meaning a tunnel. <laughs> And uh, when, when, it, when they were set on fire, they escaped through there. So, but that was just one of the things. They tried to poison them, they cheated them, they, they tried to, uh, uh, you know, humiliate their wife. All of this, yet Arjun says, in that battle, when it's about to start, he says, and there are the, uh, the sons of Jitarashtra, uh, who belong to the same clan, the Kurus, you know, whom if we killed, we wouldn't care to live. Just see. He forgave them completely for all of their implications, you know, and he's saying that. So anyway, uh, he was not under the shelter of Krishna. That Krishna wanted him to fight. He wasn't, he wasn't fighting. So to be under the shelter of Krishna means to, be, to, to gear your activity so it's in tune with Krishna's desires. That's the essence of bhakti. The essence of bhakti is, is you become a pure devotee when every one of your breaths, every one of your, your movements is consciously offered to Krishna. Uh, for, his, for his purposes. And I've been seeing this. I don't know if you're, if you're all familiar with this, but uh, I don't know, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, Yadubar, you know, the, who made so many movies for you know, glorifying Prabhupada, his, his wife, Ashaka, took so many uh, photographs. She's on morning walks and everything. So uh, they made something called Following Srila Prabhupada, which is a series of, uh, they're now on YouTube, you know, the CDs. I have the D DVDs. And they go through uh, all the video that they had, and they found the devotees who were in there who, who could narrate. That's the best part. There's different options. And one of them is to do the narrations. And the devotees who were there are, are saying, and this is what happened here. And it's, it's absolutely fascinating, you know, how, uh, to see the movement grow. They saw the first time, you know, right there in 22nd Avenue, a few devotees, and gradually West Coast. The first Ratiyatra in, 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 San, Diego, in uh, San Francisco is there, and on and on like that. You know. And the whole, the whole, what you see happen there is that they all became very attracted to Prabhupada personally. They, they saw his purity, his bliss, his, his sacrifice for them, how much he was, you know, he came to America at old age, and, and to just give them this knowledge and this wonderful practice, which when they took part in it, chanting Hare Krishna, they, you know, they felt high. You know, this is right in the middle of the drug culture, you know. <laughs> and they even asked Prabhupada, can we make this uh, little pamphlet, you know, stay high forever? You know, because everybody around here is on drugs, you know, they're trying to get high. He said, yes, yes, you can do like that. <laughs> stay high forever, chant Hare Krishna. So, the, and, and so what, how are they advancing? Because they were serving Prabhupada. They were pleasing him in his mission. You know, when they, one of them learned to cook, Kirtananda, you know, he became the first cook. And Gargamuni went and bought the, uh, the, the first the dictaphone, you know, that probably could then speed up his production. And they were all doing things. Satsuru, uh, Steve, he became Satsuru, uh, eventually Satsuru Das Goswami. He had a job, as did uh, Brahmananda. As a, one was a welfare worker, one was a teacher, I think. So they, they said, should we quit our job? Said, no, 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 don't quit the job. You, you <laughs> work your job and you give your salary to Krishna. 
So they said, well, how can I give the salary to Krishna? Just give it to me. I'll, I'll spend it for Krishna, you know. <laughs> so in this way, you know, and they were then under the shelter of Krishna. They were under the protection of Krishna. Prabhupada even made a, made a point of it that I think it was Kirtananda who was, you know, his, his parents with some fam- one of his fathers was a famous preacher in the south somewhere and everything. So they actually were able to convince the doctors that he was crazy and they put, were able to put him into Bellevue for op- observation, you know. And so, so he has, you know, before he went in, he asked Prabhupada what to do. He just keep chanting and praying, you know, you'll be all right. And then Prabhupada in the lecture says, and we, we weren't in anxiety either. He was doing what I said. And uh, he was protection. Eventually they saw that he was as sane as anything. You know, he was very calm and collected. He wasn't in fear. And, you know, couldn't keep him there. So the point is, is that uh, Krishna will provide a shelter. And uh, it's provided that we, we, we act under his shelter, under his instruction. Mat prasada, one will, will, will gain the mercy of the Lord, the grace of the Lord. Just like we sing every day, those who go to Mangalarti, yasya prasada, bhagavat prasada. That one, one gets the mercy of the, the guru by acting, instruction, following, worshipping. Then you get the mercy of Krishna. There's no other way, you know. Krishna doesn't do it directly. He sees how you're serving his most beloved, you know, devotee. And this is how it works. So we're coming to the, the conclusion, the climax of the Gita here. And soon Krishna will say, now I will tell you again the most confidential knowledge. And it's nothing but the, what we learned at the end of chapter 9. Manmana, baba madbhakto, madhyajim nam namaskaru. Always think of me, become my devotee, offer your homage to be bow down to me. Surely you'll come to me. That's the essence of the whole Gita. All right, any comments or questions on 56? Uh, yes, go ahead, Madhav. Prabhu, we see time and time again that Krishna is often associating with the elite members of society, but yet we understand that he's the super soul, he's friend to all. It would seem that it would be equal probability that he would be associating with the poor man as well as the rich. But what we see oftentimes is him associating with the kings and the elite members. Why is that? Does Krishna favor the elite? <laughs> Well, let's see. Are there any times when he? <laughs> what about when he, when he uh, comes into, uh, walks into into Mathura? You know, he's there with his friends and he's coming, and uh, yeah, he associates with the elite washerman by cutting off his head. He, but he associates with the simple uh, uh, Sudama, the the garland maker, Kubja. You know. He's perfect, and then there's that, that that wonderful scene near the end of the Krishna book. Uh, he, he goes with a bunch of sages to a, a town. I forget the name of the city, but there's Bahulashva and uh, and Shudadev. Um, I think Bahulashva is the king, and Shudadev is the. I may have it backwards. Uh, Shudadev is is a simple Brahmin, you know, very simple. But each gets the mercy. Of, I think they may split up. I think he's, they go simultaneously. But, it, but this is to show how he's perfectly willing to bless those and, and, and meet, you know, very simple, you know, he's attracted by that. And in Vindavan, he's all, they're all simple, you know. So he, he but, but you see, the thing is that uh, this Bhagavad Gita, you have to remember, is so within the Mahabharata, and Krishna is, is very much engineering a whole wholesale purification of the world. So he's right in there with the, the kings and the fighters and those who are going to help him to reinstitute, reinstitute Dharma. But in different manifestations, like, uh, you know, when he was, when he was in his cow, cow herd manifestation, he was perfectly willing. And as Lord Chaitanya, famously, you know, he uplifted Haridas Thakur and this Brahman and this. And, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. So he's, he is... Uh, uh, very merciful to the fallen. Dina Bandhu, as it say. Text 57. Chaita Sat Sava Karmani. Mai Sanya Simat Paraha. Buddhi Yoga Mapashritya. Machitta Satatambhava. In all activities, just depend upon me and work always under my protection. In such devotional service, be fully conscious of me. Purport. When one acts in Krishna consciousness, he does not act as the master of the world. Just like a servant, one should act fully under the direction of the Supreme Lord. A servant has no individual independence. He acts only on the order of the master. 
A servant acting on behalf of the Supreme Master is unaffected by profit and loss. He simply discharges his duty faithfully in terms of the order of the Lord. Now, one may argue that Arjuna was acting under the personal direction of Krishna, but when Krishna is not present, how should one act? If one acts according to the direction of Krishna in this book, as well as under the guidance of the representative of Krishna, then the result will be the same. The Sanskrit word, word matparaha, is very important in this verse. It indicates that one has no goal in life save and accept acting in Krishna consciousness just to satisfy Krishna. And while working in that way, one should think of Krishna only. Quote, I have been appointed to discharge this particular duty by Krishna. Close quote. While acting in such a way, one naturally has to think of Krishna. This is perfect Krishna consciousness. One should, however, note that after doing something whimsically, he should not offer the result to the Supreme Lord. That sort of duty is not in the devotional service of Krishna consciousness. One should act according to the order of Krishna. This is a very important point. That order of Krishna comes through the disciplic succession from the bona fide spiritual master. Therefore, the spiritual master's order should be taken as the prime duty of life. If one gets a bona fide spiritual master and acts according to his direction, then one's perfection of life in Krishna consciousness is guaranteed. So this is, reminds me of this uh, verse in the second chapter, which Prabhupada emphasized. Vyavaseyatmaka buddhir ekeha kudunandana bahushaka inantasta buddha yoga vasainam. This vavaseyatmaka buddhi is like one point of determination in Krishna consciousness. Buddha, your intelligence fixed, serving Krishna. Ekeha, one pointed, of Kurunandana, son of the Kurus. Bahushaka inantasta buddha yoga vasainam. One who's not in that determination, then the, the, the intelligence will be many branched, it'll be all over the place. We probably experienced that. So in that purport, Prabhupada quotes uh, Baladev Vijibhushan, I think, of uh, Vishnu Chakravarti. They both wrote, I don't know if you know, Baladev was a disciple of Vishnu Chakravarti, who was, uh, when he was, you know, he was, he was regarded as some, by some as a reincarnation of Rupa Goswami, his writings and his mood and his as you addition, yeah. But then uh, his very learned disciple was Baladev Vijibhushan. If you look at the beginning of the book, you see... Yes, Vishnak, yeah. And Baladev was his disciple, and he was known as Vidyabhushan. He, he received that epithet, that honor, because it means he had the, the ornament of knowledge regarding his erudition. And this book is dedicated to him. The Prabhupada dedicated the book to Baladev because he relied, relied heavily on his commentaries for uh, these purports that we're reading here. Yeah, that's true. So... Uh, so that in this purport to that verse that I quoted, Vishnu Chakrabarti emphasizes that this means one should accept the order of one's spiritual master and was life and soul. You know, that's, that's, that's the meaning of it. And then you're really fixed in your devotion. And Prabhupada did that. He, you know, the, your order was, okay, now you preach in English and you preach and go to the West, you know, like that. And Prabhupada was uh, preaching in English. He was publishing back to Godhead magazine, you know, even as a, as a sannyasi. And he also wrote, of course, the first volume of the Bhagavatam with great effort. It took years to publish that, you can imagine. Uh, and then when the time came, you know, he even said he was, he was horrified because he kept having this repeat, uh, recurring dream where Bhaktisiddhanta was coming to him and taking, telling him, urging him to take sannyas. But at that time, he was still involved with his business, you know, and he, you know, there was a period there where he was conducting his business and also preaching, you know. So, but then at a, at a certain point, he took Vanaprastha, you know, because his family wasn't supporting him in the preaching, you know, and the famously, his wife sold his Bhagavatam for tea biscuits, I think it was, or something like that, you know. <laughs> and so anyway, he took Vanaprastha, and then his, his god brothers were encouraging him to take sannyas, and finally he did, you know. In, uh, from uh, Keshava Maharaj. So, with that, with, you know, in that, in that uh, renunciative mood, then he you know, got on the boat. There's a wonderful essay uh, written by Bhaktivedanta Kaswami. I think it's a chapter in his book. There's a book he wrote, uh, Glorifying Prabhupada. Just meditating on Prabhupada getting on the boat, you know, getting on that, that, that Jaladuta boat with seven dollars worth of rupees and a bag of books. He didn't know if he was going to be eat anything, so he had a big bag of cereal and dried potatoes or something. 
you know, he's, he's, he's got, relying completely on Krishna. And, you know, he had so seasickness, sea sickness. He, has, he kept a diary. And uh, then he had a, two heart attacks on there. It's amazing. But he, but he survived. He had a dream. Krishna said, don't worry, I've taken charge of the boat. And then the, the uh, wife of the captain said, because it, su- it was such a smooth crossing on the Atlantic. Now, that, that is hurricane season. I know because I lived in Miami for six years. September is the middle of hurricane season. Probably was in it, but not this time. You know, it was completely calm. The, the, uh, the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. So the wife of the captain who was on the ship with him said, could you please come back with us so that you can you know, keep it uh, <laughs> as calm as it was. So the, so the point is that Prabhupada felt protected. He felt, you know, it, with all of that, he felt protected by Krishna and he even got this direct, you know, vision of Krishna in his dream protecting him. So that's, the, that's what this is all about, is that uh, you become conscious of me. Did we read 58? Machitat Savadurgani? No, Machitat Savakarmani. Uh, so, Maisanyasa Matparaha. This Matparaha is so important. You ever hear this phrase? It's very poetic. Narayana Parayana? You know? <laughs> the word Parayana is equivalent to para. It's a, it's a different thing. It means totally dedicated, 100%. Narayana Parayana is the description of, of, of a pure devotee. Krishna Parayana or uh, Matpara, you know? It means that your, your every breath, every thought, you know, is hooked up to, is, is this what Krishna wants me to do at this moment? There's a very nice verse in the 11th canto. There's a series of instructions by the nine Yogendras. There are nine, these are nine sons of Rishabhdev, who when he, he took sannyas, they took sannyas. And, and they started traveling throughout the universe. And in the 11th canto, each of them comes on the stage, if you will, and gives this nice little instruction, different topics. They're, they're, they're asked questions by, I forget, the king, wonderful king, I forget the name. So one of them, the verses of this instruction, it says, uh, how, how does it start? Kain abacha manasin diyava buddhyap nabha nusita sobhava Kadodi yad yad sakalam parasmai narayanayeti samarpayetat. This is kind of an expansion of a verse in the ninth chapter. Yat karoshi, yat ishnasi, yat yirosi, tadasiya, yat tapasikon matkarashvamarapadam. Whatever you eat, whatever you do, whatever you give away, do it as an offering to me. But here it says, whatever you do has a whole list. Kayena, with your body, with your word, vacha, manasa, your mind, indriya, senses, uh, with your intelligence, with yourself. Whatever you have, whatever activity you, you think, I'm doing this as an offering to, to Narayan. I'm doing this as an offering to Vishnu. Imagine what that means if you're fully Krishna conscious. Prabhupada showed it. When he would answer the phone, it wasn't just, hey, hello, who's there? You know, it's like he would pick up the phone and you saw this was, he was doing it for Krishna, you know? And whatever was going on, of course, devotees would call him, you know, and it, it, it was all a service for Krishna. So every breath is connected to Krishna because it's, you're living for his purpose. You're walking from here to there for his purpose. So this is pure devotional service. And that, that's what he's, uh, he's speaking about. Uh, much it, uh, actually, uh, yes, the next verse is even more graphic, the same idea. Uh, in, in all activities, think of me, and, but if you don't, you know, then you, you'll be destroyed. But here, in everything, Machita Satatam Biva, always think of me. Here he's, he's getting to the point of, of the whole chapter in the whole book. Always think of me, always be conscious of me, and you, you, your intelligence will always link to me, taking shelter of me. And in this way, you're sure to come to me. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's what he says in 58, and he's going to say it even more explicitly in a few verses in 60, 65. So let's go on. This is kind of the climax of the whole, whole Gita here. 58. This is a famous verse. Machitta Savadurgani. Matpasara Tarishisi. Atachetvam ahankaram. Nashosisi vinankshisi. So this is one of these either or verses. Here's your choice in life. If you become conscious of me, says Krishna, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. 
purport. A person in full Krishna consciousness is not unduly anxious about executing the duties of his existence. The foolish cannot understand this great freedom from all anxiety. For one who acts in Krishna consciousness, Lord Krishna becomes the most intimate friend. He, he, Krishna, always looks after his friend's comfort and he gives himself to his friend who is so devotedly engaged working 24 hours a day to please the Lord. Therefore, no one should be carried away by the false ego of the bodily concept of life. One should not falsely think himself independent of the laws of material nature or free to act. He is already under strict material laws, but as soon as he acts in Krishna consciousness, he is liberated, free from the material perplexities. One should note very carefully that one who is not active in Krishna consciousness is losing himself in the material whirlpool in the ocean of birth and death. No conditioned soul actually knows what is to be done and what is not to be done. But a person who acts in Krishna consciousness is free to act because everything is prompted by Krishna from within and confirmed by the spiritual master. So this is, this is you know, the unique, unique things about Prabhupada's books, this Bhagavad Gita. There's no way you can read that and think that this is some kind of speculation. Prabhupada is talking about himself here. He's experienced this, he's experienced this himself, and he's saying this with complete conviction. He's not just quoting Krishna here. He's, telling, he's confirming what Krishna says by his, his purport. That's, and I, I, I've been, uh, you know, I always listen to tapes of Prabhupada. He's saying several times now that the, that the purpose of reading the Bhagavad Gita, one of the main purposes, is to increase one's faith in Krishna. And if, you, you're not going to get that if you read the commentary from, from the non devotee from some, you know, some academic or something. So that's the great value of this Bhagavad Gita as it is. So once, if, if that phase is increased, that's the, that's the, you know, the, the great value. Then from, on the basis of that faith, you change your life. Your life is changed. Now I have faith that Krishna, you know, if I just chant Hare Krishna and if I just work for Krishna, if I work to get closer to Krishna, that my life will be auspicious. You know, this is really what I've been looking for all these lifetimes. So that so Krishna is assuring us here, you will pass on. And, and and it's what's so great, you know, about Prabhupada's life is that he showed he the realization of this. He passed over all the obstacles that were placed in his way, threats to his life. That whole scene in Bombay where they tried to you know wreck the the, the temple, you know, uh, the challenges of uh, his Ill, you know del delicate health. That was also something he needed to overcome, you know. To, to move, push the movement on. And devotees, you know, not living up to his expectations. The whole thing, you know, the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple, if you, you know, if you don't know the whole history, Prabhupada expe expected to open it in 1973. He was getting all these assurances from uh, his man in, in, in Vrindavan that yes, it will be done, you know, but it's impossible to get the, the, all the cement and get everything. I mean, they saw, oh, these, these Americans, we can easily cheat them, you know. And so they were being cheated left and right. And so Prabhupada arrives, nothing is done, the temple isn't built, you know, and he's saying, okay, next year for sure. So, okay, for sure, Prabhupada. And so he invited all these people. Didn't happen, 74. <laughs> Finally, in 75, Prabhupada left in 77. So in 75, the temple opened, you know, and he was there. I was fortunate enough to be there by Krishna's arrangement. But, you know, having to deal with all these disappointments and these threats, you know how we got the land? There's an incredible story, how we got the land. Uh, this prime land in, in Raman Reti. At that time, it was on, the, on the, the outskirts of Vrindavan. Very, very rural there. You know, it hadn't been built up. Now it's been built up. But uh, that land was also desired by some other lady who was an heiress, and, uh, but she was a Vaishnavi, and she wanted to do a temple, you know. So there was some competition. So Yamuna was there. And, uh, so they said, okay, we're going to see if Radharani wants to give you the land, they would give you the land. So I'm, I'm going to pick you know, one of these, these two. One says yes, one says no. Uh, if you get the yes, then your land is yours. If not, then it goes to this other lady. That's how it was. <laughs> so you, 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 Yamuna, you, Yamuna picked one, one you know, ticket out of the hat, whatever it was. It was yes. <laughs> And it was on the basis of that that they signed the gun and they were able to build the temple. Otherwise, it's, you know, looking for, still looking for land. There was all these amazing miracles going on. Oh, I wanted to tell you, this is, this is a little story. 
you know, these little miracles, sometimes they're not so little, but in your own life you may find some that really help to, you know, confirm your faith, you know, and take you along. So I have this little miracle. I don't have many stories like this, but this is interesting. When I came here, you, you maybe remember this, uh, Mr. Dave, we didn't have this, these two tables here, which is ideal for Charanamita. Believe it or not, you see that little, the small one is actually very ornate. It's onyx. That comes from L.A. L.A. had these incredible uh, onyx all around, which was all destroyed in an earthquake. That's another miracle. Uh, you have to visualize they had these, uh, near the walls, they had these onyx uh, shapes, just like this, ornate shapes, but they were, you know, out from the wall. 1994, I wasn't there, but I heard about it. Just like, you know, right after the conch blows, you know, and we offer, everyone offered there as a basis. So they're, they're on the first altar, of course, you offer, and you come to the second one, and the earthquake hits right there. All the onyx comes crashing down. It would have been, a lot of devotees would have been injured if it had come, but they're right in the middle. There was no injuries. But that was like $100,000 at least worth of onyx. And it was put in for that, then it was there for 10 years, so, you know, it was, probably was twice that. So they had to redecorate the whole temple. So this was left, and somehow it came down here, that little onyx table. That's all we had. So we had the, 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 the Charanamrita bowl on that, and then, believe it or not, the, uh, the pitcher and the other bowl was on the floor. And that's how we took Charanamrita. You would, you would you know, take it and then go down. And, and, I, and I find after a year of that, I said, this is no good. You have these old Indian ladies come and take Charanamrita. And how they, it's not suitable. So I was visualizing a, a, a table like this with an inlay of uh, whatever it may be, you know, that, that it's, because it's going to get wet, you know. And uh, so I say, where can I try to find something like that? So one devotee who was here, his name was Jai Gorbin, uh, Guy, uh, Gorsunda. He said, well, maybe down at Home Depot, they have tables for the garden. You may find something. I went down. There was nothing suitable, you know. So I just kept praying. One day, <laughs> a few days later, this thing appears in the temple. No one can say where it came from. Yeah, no one can say where that table came from. And I, and I said, that's, that's amazing, you know. So at first we had it for the Tulsi table. I said, no, 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 we'll have another Tulsi table. That's perfect for what I had. And so we set it up. We've had it. This is a perfect setup. Eventually I went up to Laguna Beach because every year, right after uh, Gaur Purnima, on the next Saturday, they have a big festival there. They still do it to this day. So there's a devotee there, an old devotee who met Prabhupada in 26th Second Avenue, didn't get initiated right at that time, a little later, his name is Aja, I believe. He's an Indian gentleman. Very nice family. He's lived up there for years. Uh, and the reason I mention it is that uh, I saw they had an identical table up there in Laguna Beach Temple. And I asked around, where did that come from? He said, well, Aja, Aja donated it. Because he, he was kind of a wealthy Indian. You know, he had it, had it made. And I asked him, so did you bring one of those down to San Diego? Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> But I mean, it was, I was thinking of something just like that and it manifested, you know. So that was a faith building experience. <laughs> anyway. All right, we have time for one more. Okay, text 59. So uh, just, just, just uh, one quick other comment on here. So the idea is that you're giving up the false ego and you're taking on the real, real ego. Is that. You're simply acting on Krishna's wishes and you're taking pleasure in pleasing him. This is the essence of bhakti. Uh, Jiva Goswami says in his Sandarbhas, it's in the second canon in the purport to famous verse, Akama Sarvakoma Va, which I think is the tenth verse in that chapter, the uh, third chapter. So Prabhupada quotes this phrase from the Sandarbhas, Bhajaniya Padama Purusha Sukha Matra Swasukatvam. It's very simple. Bhajaniya means worshipable. Padma Purusha means supreme person. The, the supreme person who is worshipable, that's Krishna. Uh, Sukha Matra, only his happiness. Matra is only. Sukha Matra, Swasukadvam, is your hap That is your only happiness to see the happiness of Krishna. That's pure devotional service. Uh oh, is that your phone? Hare Krishna. All right. So that's what uh, this whole thing is about. Otherwise, false ego is looking, for, identifying with the body and looking for the happiness of the body. And that is, uh, yeah, 
we, did, we did we read fifty eight? We, we did, yeah. So a hunkar, if you if you absorb the hunkar, then you, you won't hear me and you'll be destroyed. Yada hunkar amashritya. Na yotya idimanyase. Mityaisha bibasayaste. Prakatistvam niyokshyati. Niyokshyati, sorry. If you do not act according to my directions and do not fight, then you will be falsely directed. By your nature, you will have to be engaged in warfare. Purport. Arjun was a military man and born of the nature of the Kshatriya. Therefore, his natural duty was to fight. But due to false ego, he was fearing that by killing his teacher, grandfather, and friends, he would incur sinful reactions. Actually, he was considering himself master of his actions, as if he were directing the good and bad results of such work. He forgot that the Supreme Personality of God it was present there, instructing him to fight. That is the forgetfulness of the conditioned soul. The Supreme Personality gives directions as to what is good and what is, not, what is bad, and one simply has to act in Krishna consciousness to attain the perfection of life. No one can ascertain his destiny as the Supreme Lord can. Therefore, the best course is to take direction from the Supreme Lord and act. No one should neglect the order of the Supreme Personality of God or the order of the spiritual master who is the representative of God. One should act unhesitatingly to execute the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That will keep one safe under all circumstances. And that's the essence of Bhakti Yoga. So I, if you'll allow me, there's a little poem. Yeah, you, go ahead, Prabhu. Go ahead, Prabhu. Go ahead. Yes. You mean that they're in the night? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think they went all night. Maybe some of them did, but that's when, you know, because they you have these are hostages. They they have things to do during the day. You know, it wasn't like a, and so uh, that's the way it started. The whole thing started that way, and then I think it was there that the Kazi came and broke a drum. I don't know if you know that. And then the, this is how Lord says, okay. No more behind, you know, this is behind closed doors. And he sent word out, and every everyone should come out with a, tonight with a big, uh, what do you call it? You know, like like with oil and with flame, torch, torch a torch, yeah. yeah, torch. Sorry, where is it coming? Uh, and we're gonna have a huge kirtan, and it'll end at the Kazi's house. So they came out by the hundreds of thousands, you know, it was an incredible kirtan, and he was, Lodzidani was dancing. And they had, of course, the Kazi had his uh, armory, you know, he had the Muslim soldiers. They were completely outnumbered. So it says they, they came out and they hid their beards. They threw their weapons away. They hid their beards because they saw this, th these people, are not, you know, they're completely, out, they're not going to stop if we tell them to stop. They're not afraid of us anymore. You know? <laughs> so they ended up at the Kazi's house and they started to destroy it. And Lodzidani said, no, 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 stop, you know. <laughs> And he had a talk with the Kazi, and the Kazi, he, he convinced the Kazi to allow, allow the cure. And, and when you go to Mayapur, in Navadri, we have a Harinam, you know, and it says, the Kazi, from the Kazi's order, he, he said, in, in all the generations that come, no one should stop the Sankrata movement of Lord Chaitanya. And so to this day, you can freely go in Navadri. So that's, it started as this nocturnal kirtans. Totally, totally. So, Prabhupada used that very phrase, civil disobedience, because that he was with Gandhi, you know, Prabhupada, and so he did this civil disobedience thing. So he used that. This was Lord Chaitanya. He started the civil disobedience. Yeah, yeah. I had a question. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Now, would you say that you know that could easily fall into uh, uh, some, uh, some servitude being more like slavery of that person? No. no well, not. first of all, you have to realize this has come up because I'm an editor. Servitude means slavery, and Prabhupada would use that word. Um, I don't know if there, I don't know if there's another meaning from the Oxford English Dictionary, but he would also use the word servitorship. And one of my projects, hopefully I can get agreement, now I have to check with the board, the editorial review panel, to take all these servitudes and turn them into servitorship. Because servitude means, especially in modern English, 
slavery, but that's not what it, bhakti is. It's voluntary service. Right. That's the whole point. You're choosing at every moment to serve Krishna. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no question of love. So servitude is, you know, as one of the rasas, no, it's servitorship, you know, so that's the idea. Yeah, that's what I was trying to you know, determine if there was a fine line between that, if you're not serving a pure devotee, if there's like some, you know, corruption or some things that are happening, and you're, you may not be serving, you know, uh, I mean, but still within yourself, you still have that intention to serve, but, it, you know, I'm just wondering if there's uh, that gray line between Servitorship, like actual, actual, like where you're, no, not, you're not doing something beneficial for your bhakti because you're not serving a, a pure devotee with pure intentions. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You know, in the process of sadhana, you know, we're not uh, 100% pure, so they will, will fall into that. Uh, but usually, it can come in the form of reluctance, or you're not doing it with your full consciousness and full enthusiasm, but you're still doing it. You know, that's so there's a gray line there, and that's that's okay. In other words, you're doing it, and, and if you continue and you, you know, purify your kind of, it'll come become more spontaneous. You're doing it, so that that's that's okay, uh, because there's always a battle with the uh, with the false ego versus the real ego, you know, and we know. But we don't always do what we know because they have these strong feelings of separateness. And you, we had a we had a bhakta here, you know, who was uh, and he left some time ago. I'm not going to name any names. This is at least six months or a year ago now, and he was doing fine. But then, you know, yes, he wanted to leave. You know, well, what's my? It's just a slave mentality, you know. Maybe you asked him to do the pots one too much time too many. You know, he loved to chant and dance. Maybe the the, the thing is, I'm telling you. Harinam, regular Harinam is a real lifeblood of a temple and it, and it, it keeps everybody alive in the devotional service. And, and the movement has, has evolved where that's rare to have that every day, you know. And so, all right, we've come to the point where we're going to adjourn and we'll, tomorrow we'll be, we'll be assembled. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh-huh.